To begin, print page 1 and use the measuring box in the corner to measure 1 cm or 1 inch. If that measures correctly, print the remaining pages. Sack all the pages together and lay it down flat, making sure that they're all lined up perfectly on top of each other. I then cut the right hand side of the border. Just keep cutting through it softly and as opposed to one hard cut, because then you're more likely to move that paper around. And then just rotate the paper and cut the bottom hand of that border down. You can cut the entire perimeter of this border, but I prefer to just cut the right and bottom hand sides so that if I have cut away too much or too little, there is an extra allowance or tolerance on the other side of the paper for when I tape it on top later, which you will see. So that tolerance looks like this. You can see that I am overlaying that paper on top and I have a little bit of excess print printed on the underside of that. So if I've cut away too much, I have a little bit of a tolerance there to work within. So once you do that, you're just gonna get a little bit of tape and tape those little arrows together to create an X for both the top and bottom. So just repeat that process for the rest of the pattern. And this is what you will be left with. You will then have to go back into the pattern and use longer strips to adjoin the pieces of paper together. Make sure when you lay that down, you're just laying it down flat and you're not stretching that paper or tape. From there, you can then begin to cut out your sewing pattern in whichever size you need. You can use PDF one to determine your size using the size guide. Uh, for reference, I am using a size small for this tutorial, but also remember that this is an adjustable fit because you do have that tie up waist. Now it is time to start cutting out our fabric. So I'm going to start off cutting out the straps. You can use the sewing pattern if you like, but I prefer to use a cutting mat and a long ruler and my chalk pen. So I just fold the fabric like this. And then once that is lined up nicely, I then go back and fold that again one more time. And then I make sure that it is in line with my cutting mat so that I can draw my lines. So I think the fabric that I'm using is an old remnant fabric of mine and I think I'm working with just under a meter of fabric here for a size small so about one meter of fabric should do you. So I am just cutting out two straps here and removing that excess. So once you've cut out those two straps just put them to the side. Now we're going to move into cutting out the segments of the skirt in this fabric so just make sure that you are following the grain line of where the sewing pattern indicates so the grain line is having that fabric run vertically so i'm just laying down that pattern to lay vertically you may also want to play around with how you lay out that pattern so that you're getting as minimal waste as possible so once you have cut everything out, the first thing we are going to want to work on is our back panels of both the lining and the front segment of the skirt. So what I like to do for making darts in my sewing patterns is popping in three pins, two at the top and one at the bottom. The reason I like to do that is so that the pin comes through on the other side. So I flip that and then I repeat that process again of popping in some pins using the original pin markers as my reference point. And then because I made sure I cut the fabric in a certain way so that when it was folded, I would be working on the bad side of the fabric, I can get my chalk pen and my ruler and draw a couple of lines. So once you pull that apart, this is the kind of lines that you will be left with. So you will just pop some pins to hold those darts in place and you will repeat this process for the other back panel. So this is what you will be left with once you have pinched in all of those darts with the pin. So you'll pick that up with the straps and bring that across to the straight sewer. So you're just going to repeat the same process for all four darts. So begin with a back stitch or back tack, whichever you like to use, and finish with a back. And then you can just sew the straps down to whatever thickness you would like your straps to be. This is about one centimeter, which actually is not that friendly of a thickness to do when you are using a loop turner. So if you have struggles turning things inside out, maybe go for a thicker strap. But here for your reference, I did a one centimeter thickness. So I just used my loop turner to turn those straps inside out and then I gave them a good press with my iron. I am now cutting them down to size as what the template recommends for both the straps. 
Moving on to the main portion of the skirt, I am now going to overlock the left and right hand side of all three segments of the skirt. Now with that done, we're going to want to reintroduce our sewing patterns again because they have little markers on them of where we're going to be adding in a little hole for the strap that feeds through. So grab that back part of the skirt, lay it down, good side of the fabric facing up. Then we're going to grab front segment A of the skirt, that's good side facing up, and we are going to flip it and match those corners up. Then you're going to grab that back segment again and find little markers in the top right hand corner which indicates where we will be situating that little hole opening for the straps to feed through and just pop two pins in to block out exactly where we will not be sewing. And if you don't trust yourself to not sew over the top of it, just add a little X with some chalk or something so that you can have that visual reminder. Now we are going to take that remaining segment of the front part of the skirt and make those good sides of the fabric face each other and just pop some pins in to secure it. And then once you've done that, you can just pop that to the side. Next up is attaching the lining segments together and putting in our markers of where the hole will be on this as well. So ignore everything else, get front A section, lie that down with the good side of the fabric facing up and then get the back segment of the lining and place that on top and pop some pins in to secure it. Grab that lining again and use it as a reference point to indicate where the markers are going to go for the hole. And then do that little X thing again just so you remember we are not sewing over that. The hardest part is knowing which side the hole is in. So now that we know which side the hole is in, we can just get that remaining bit of lining and attach it. Now everything that we just pinned together, we're gonna to take that across to our straight sewer. So close up those side seams, make sure that you start and finish with a back stitch. So just take this bit nice and slow. So you are going to begin with the back stitch and then you will quickly finish again with the back stitch because we've gotten to that hole opening slide over the top of it and then go again back stitch and then all the way down finishing with the back stitch and doing a one centimeter seam allowance now for the main segment parts of the skirt start with the back stitch and then finish again with the back stitch go over the hole start with the back stitch and then go all the way down finish with that back stitch and then just repeat the process for the other side closing it up once we have that lining attached together on all the side seams, we're going to overlock this base line here and that will look like this. Now pick up that main segment part of the skirt and open it up. Good side of the fabric facing up. Then you're going to reintroduce that lining back again, place it on top so that good sides of the fabric are facing each other and that at each seam point or dart, you are going to put a pin in to make sure that they are perfectly connected both back and front. And now we're just gonna sew the top line on the sewing machine. You'll be working with a one centimeter seam allowance. Start with the back stitch and finish with the back stitch and make sure when you are going over the side seams, the side seams are open or when you're going over a dart, one dart is facing one way and the one underneath is facing the opposite way. This is for less bulk. It just creates a more seamless profile. You can definitely hem this skirt, but I am opting to leave mine having a raw edge. So this is the last bit of sewing involved for me in this tutorial. I am going to grab that long length of strap that we made earlier and pop that underneath this little flap here. You will then grab a pin and hold that into place. Grab that shorter strap and feed that through onto the other side. Just pop it in there, add a little pin to keep it in place. And now we're going to take this across to our sewing machine. So the reason why this panel here has a longer, longer piece of lining is because this is the front part of the skirt that will show and I wanted it to have a seamless finish. So start and stop with a back stitch and maybe just do an extra back stitch over where that strap is situated if you would like and just repeat that again on the other side. Now I want you to find where that hole is going to be. So I just 
stitched over the top of it a couple of times because I'm doing a really close cut and the reason why you are going to do a close cut is because you need to remove the excess because when you turn that inside out the hole is pretty much right at the top so if you didn't cut away that excess it would be blocking the hole then I'm just lining up the front and back on top of each other perfectly so that the seams are in sync and I'm just going to pop that underneath the machine and do a little stitch exactly there where that little seam is so that that stitch is concealed but then it keeps that hole in place every time. And that is the skirt pretty much done. You're going to get that really long length of the strap and feed that through the hole and then you will have it passing through the back and tying up at the front. And that is the finished result. That is the end of the tutorial. As always, please comment below if I can help you with anything. Subscribe so that you can get 20% off discount codes, my new sewing patterns. And outside of that, good luck with your sewing project.